over for my cash. Shit been hot, no more posting on the app. She called me cap a lot, so I bought the bitch a bag. Lil' Unky, that's my heart, you don't wanna make a mad. What the fuck going on, YouTube? Lil' Unk back in the reaction video. Reacting to um, CJ the fake blood behind, behind um, Muti. Yeah, man. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment, all that shit, man. Fuck you talking about. Um, <clears throat> Tune to my main channel, link. Fuck it, I'm not even gonna put the, nah, I ain't gonna put the link, but you know what I mean? I'm gonna put the little cards all right here, too, or right here. I don't know what side it's gonna be on. Probably this side, though, right? Yeah. Feel me? Click that. It's lit. Gangsta. But without further ado, let's get into it, man. Or. CJ is a drill rapper from Staten Island who blew up last year with the hit song Whoopi. Oh, but since going viral, mm -hmm. many question his street cred and accuse him of being fake in an industry plan. Let's get into the career and come up of CJ, the wannabe blood behind Whoopi. CJ first got the world's attention with his hit song Whoopi, which dropped July 30th, 2020, and peaked at number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100. The track instantly blew up thanks to the hard-hitting beat and viral music video which shows CJ and his homies posted on the block, rocking red rags and shouting the catchphrase, Whoopty, a blood greeting call. The beat to Whoopty featured a sample from the Indian song, Sanam Ri. This same sample was famously used in the beat for Exposing Me by Mimo 600 and King Von, which was also remixed by drill rappers like FPG Duck, Ruga, and 2-2-Gs. So, the song became an instant hit because of the familiar beat, generic bars, and catchy hook. Not long after it popped off, people began taking a closer look at CJ to find out if he was really Wooty or just claiming for the clout. CJ grew up in Staten Island and comes from a Puerto Rican family. He started rapping as a hobby when he was nine, but took it more seriously at 14 when he started dropping tracks on SoundCloud and YouTube. He had a few tracks on SoundCloud before blowing up with Wooty, including the song with the OG Fake Blood 6 9 called Pop. But none of these tracks made much of an impact online or even in New York City. He self-released the track Whoopi in July 2020 using the beat he found on YouTube and became an overnight success. He later signed to Warner Records and Cruise Control Entertainment. But here's where the accusations of CJ being an industry plant first started. The CEO of Cruise Control Entertainment, James Cruz, is also CJ's uncle. CJ said multiple labels reached out to him, but Warner offered the best situation probably because he had family members in high positions at the company. His uncle James Cruz is a music mogul who has deep connections in the industry. He worked for Reebok in the 90s before making the transition into music and working for Bad Boy. Cruz got close to Puffy and ended up running his entire organization. He worked with Combs Enterprises for almost 10 years before leaving to start his own Latin-focused music marketing firm. So, CJ seemed like the perfect project for his Uncle James, who was looking for the next big Latin star to take over New York. At first, CJ had a more melodic, auto-tune-heavy approach to rapping, but this ain't attract much attention. CJ just wanted the clout, and he wasn't trying to spend the next decade grinding in the music industry to make a name for himself. So, he took notes from 6 ix playbook and started making aggressive drill tracks, flaunting his alleged gang ties. To his credit, it worked, and Whoopi was one of the biggest songs in New York in the summer of 2020. The track went viral on TikTok too, which boosted his popularity. Plus, it got a major push on radio and other outlets thanks to the ties from Uncle James. So overnight, CJ went from an unknown rapper to one of the biggest up and coming stars in New York. With all the attention, also brought questions from fans about who this new rapper was, as well as the gang he was from. He's clearly claiming blood from the bandanas and the legs of the time whoop, but the lyrics to the song are pretty basic and don't say what borough or what set he's from. This is when rumors went around that CJ ain't really who he claimed to be and was just another cloud chasing rapper using gangs to blow up in the music industry. Whoopi's not a phrase that CJ made up. It's a common word used in the Bronx by the Bloodhound Brim. CJ crossed the line when he did an interview with Genius where he claimed credit for the word Whoopi. He said that it was a term he invented and used with his homies. He even went as far as filing a trademark for the phrase so no one else could use it for commercial purposes. This upset the Bloodhound Brims who had been using the word for years and wanted proper credit for creating it. Bloodhound Brims founder, LeBrim, even called in from prison, calling out CJ for taking the term and not giving proper credit. LeBrim was sentenced to 30 years in prison back in 2019 in connection to his leadership of the Bloodhound Brims. Even though he's locked up, he still tapped in with what's going on in the streets and had to set the record straight about who really started Whoopty. He gave CJ props for making the hot song, but accused him of stealing the word Whoopty from the Bloodhound Brims and denies having any affiliation with the rapper. So 
Wolfie, he don't know nothing about Wolfie. He just seen a fly flag. I basically called him out, proclaiming the set and lifestyle that he and a bunch of other brands are serving decades in prison over. He says the only reason the song was hot in the first place is because of the respect they built in New York. But he's disrespecting the Brams by saying he created the word. He makes it clear he ain't beefing with CJ by saying he gonna do something to him, but he had to set the record straight about where Wolfie started. This hurt CJ street cred, and after that, more gang members and other New York drill rappers started questioning his affiliation. G5 Reels, a rapper affiliated with LeBram, also hopped on live to call out CJ for being a fake blood with no ties to the Bloodhound Brams and for copywriting the term Wolfie, even though he never put in any work for the set. First you made the f song Wolfie, then you make the song Bop, that's all I shit, boy. And you still not trying to pay homage, then you gonna copyright our shit? You copyright our shit? Like, yo boy, your head not good. The Bloodhound Brams was one of the most violent gangs in New York before being taken down in the major gang indictment in 2016. They operated in various locations in New York City, as well as Westchester, Elmira, and Pennsylvania. They was accused of trafficking massive amounts of crack, cocaine, and heroin throughout the state of New York and Pennsylvania. A lot of Bloodhound Brim leaders was later arrested in a RICO indictment and charged with crimes that included racketeering, murder, attempted murder, drug trafficking, and assault. The Brim started in Los Angeles, but later branched out to New York in the early 90s. Like most blood sets in NYC, the Brim started in prison at Rikers Island and then spread out to the streets later on. There's multiple Brim sets in New York that make up what they call the Blood Brim Army. During the height of their rise, the Brims were behind a lot of wild crimes that eventually led to their downfall. In 2012, the Brim and another blood member named Don P got arrested for a shootout at a chicken spot in the Bronx where they allegedly fired at ops for the AK-47. The Brim was later found guilty of attempted murder for the crime, which was one of the events that led to his 30-year sentence. In 2014, a Brim leader named Kevin Melton made headlines after kidnapping the father of one of the prosecutors who was responsible for locking him up for life. Melton got hit with life in prison for ordering a hit on someone in 2011. To get revenge, Melton went after one of the prosecutors who was responsible for convicting him. He set it all up using a cell phone he snuck in jail and ordered five members to kidnap the prosecutor, but they ended up going to the wrong address and instead kidnapped their father, Frank Jansen. The gang kidnapped Jansen from his crib in Atlanta and called his wife and told her they was going to torture and kill her husband if she ain't followed their demands. But the FBI was able to intercept a call between Melton and the kidnappers and found Jansen at an apartment complex in Atlanta. So the Brims was responsible for a wave of terror, not just in New York, but all over the country. This eventually led to the indictment that took down many high-ranking members of the gang, including the Brim. But even with most of their leaders locked up, the Bloodhound Brims are still well-respected in New York. So for the Brim to make a public statement denying CJ's credibility was a major blow to the rapper's career. Plus, it wasn't just Brim members, taking shots at the rapper. Brooklyn rapper 22G's also came out and questioned CJ Street Cred. In January 2021, 22G's tagged CJ on Instagram saying, at real CJ giving me 6 9 vibes and boy from Staten Island, the safest borough in NYC. He also dropped a Wolfie remix called Goofy, so he took shots at CJ calling him a groupie who was just jacking the Brooklyn drill sound to make himself more popular. In interviews, 22G's made it clear that it wasn't real beef, but he had to address the situation that CJ ain't give respect to the originators of the sound that made him famous. CJ responded to 22G's with the track Hit Up, but he don't just diss the rapper to take shots at his entire gang, the Gangsta Disciples. On the track, he raps, I catch a blicky, man down in my city, referring to 22G's blicky gang. Gang. And, in and in the video, he's seen, he's seen throwing up GDK, which means, which means Gangsta Disciple Killer, the gang that 2 2 gs is from. So not only is CJ starting beef with another rapper, he wants smoke with one of the, one of the biggest gangs, gangs in America, America too. Another, another popular, popular Brooklyn drill rapper, Busy Banks, Banks, came out and said CJ jacked his bars and stole his whole flow. Busy posted on his Instagram story, then CJ need to give me my credit, no cap. Jacking my lingo and flow, I'm tired of not getting the recognition, getting the recognition I, deserve. I deserve. I started this new wave of drill rap. Let's talk, Let's talk about it. it. If you listen to the flow and lyrics on Hit Up, it sounds similar to Busy Banks Tracks Neo and Don't Start Part 2. So instead of earning people's respect, CJ was quickly making enemies. In September 2021, 22G's did an interview with No Jumper, where Adam 22 reveals that CJ was set to do an interview, but canceled at the last minute. The reason he canceled was because the person in charge of their social media posted something about the beef between him and CJ. CJ. So, so CJ got in his feelings and canceled, and canceled the whole interview. We had an interview, had an interview <laughs> booked with CJ. <laughs>
controller. <laughs> and then somebody on the social media team, they posted, they posted up, up 2 gs diss and CJ. They just posted, they just posted about it. it. It was notable news. news. We were you know, we're paying attention. We were all talking about it in the group chat. So they posted it. CJ interview, CJ interview canceled. canceled. This was another this was L. Another L. That it's that Island rapper. rapper. He could have used an interview to tell his side of the story. But instead, he chose to stay, chose quiet. To stay quiet. CJ never CJ really, never really addressed the accusations that he's false claiming. He's false claiming. It's, still it's still another rapper style, style and flow. He also went dropped another single that brings the same kind of buzz that Whoopi did. He dropped the EP in early 2021 called Loyalty Over Royalty, which was executive produced by French Montana. But none of the other songs made the same impact as Whoopi. Unless CJ can switch up his whole style, come back with a banger that Puts him on the charts, it'll probably just, be a, probably just be a one hit wonder. Just like 6 just 9 like part, of part of his appeal was his gang ties. But once the truth, once was, the truth was exposed, fans just move, fans on, just to move on to the rappers who really live, who really live rap. what they rap. I've been pre proof for a loan, but for seven and years, and that calls. shit, man. You gave me an ad and all that and all that. But for me, United drop this channel, connecting like the you video, to comment. Yo, comment what you want me to do next right now, all that. I mean, I'm gonna do a little. I'm in that bag and bag for me. It's winter. Niggas not outside right now. It's like. But, yeah, send them shits through, man. Tune to my main channel. I'm gonna put another card right here. Nah, no, I'm not. I'm putting. It's the end of the video. Check the description.